the subject. So this is what we were talking about today. So the idea with this is that the um, in physics, I mean, if you think about the fact that you have only two ears, and this is something we briefly spoke about in a, in a previous episode um, about the psychoacoustics of, of things, um, you have two ears on your head, yet when you close your eyes, you have the ability, the mind has the ability to determine which direction the sound is coming from, you know, how far away it is, how big the space is that, that you're in, you know, um, if the, uh, if the, if let's say it's a person speaking, you can tell if they turn their head or if they turn around, you know, the sound changes, right? And, and really what's changing is, there's a few things that are changing, but the one I want to talk about today is the, the, the time difference between when a sound arrives at your, for example, left ear, um, as compared to your right ear. And so if a sound is, if the sound source is to your left, then it stands to reason that the sound is going to uh, arrive at your left ear slightly earlier than it does to your right ear. And so that, that, you know, very small increment of time difference of delay between the signal arriving at your left ear versus your right ear. Um, in an instant, in a nanosecond, the mind is able to determine which direction that sound is coming from. So there's a, there's a neat trick that you can play when you bear this in mind in your mixes um, that has to do with uh, panning and basically creating the illusion or the impression that a sound is is coming from wherever you want it to come from. So uh, I want to demonstrate that for you here. So what I've got basically is I've got uh, um, a keyboard part um, that I lifted from a tune that I mixed a while back. Really nice mellow little keyboard part. Um, a great player was was playing on this track and uh, um, the, the and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm not going to touch my panner at all, but I'm going to create the illusion, the impression um, that the sound is either centered or a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, a further a distance to the left, a further distance to the right, um, and and demonstrate how you can create these things without the use of panning. Um, so let me let me demonstrate it for you first. Let let me play you the part. Uh, let's see here. So here we got the keyboard part coming in right now. Now, what I've done is I've taken this keyboard part, which is a mono track, and I've duplicated that track. So it's, there's an identical copy uh, of the same track, and I just simply panned one hard left and one hard right. So as you know, that makes the sound come you know, from the middle, because it's the same thing as mono when it's hard left and hard right of the identical signal. So just listen to that for a sec. Okay, so right in, the, right in the center, right smack in the middle. If you're listening on headphones, that should sound like it's coming from right in the middle of your head, you know, right in the middle of your forehead or behind your eyes or whatever. Uh, on loudspeakers, you should hear it right from that phantom center position that we've talked about in the past. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the right channel, okay, and let me just, let me just solo that for a minute. Uh, actually, yeah, here's what we'll do. Okay, there's the channel on the right, just so you can hear what I'm doing here. There's the channel on the left, okay? Play them both, and you're back in mono again, right back in the center, okay? So I'm going to take that right channel, and I'm going to delay it by, let's say, three milliseconds, okay? So have a listen to this. Hear what happened there? I didn't touch a pan pot or, or, or nothing. All I did was add a three millisecond delay to the right channel, which means the sound is arriving at the left ear earlier first. You hear how that sounds? So now, because it's arriving earlier to the left ear, the brain interprets that as a, a directionality cue. So you hear the sound now as if it's been panned to the left. Let me add, let me increase that delay. I'm gonna to go to five milliseconds. Do 
when you hear that. Okay, let me go back to zero again, mono. There it is. Five milliseconds. Isn't that interesting? It is to me. If you're an audio nerd like I am, you'll find that fascinating. <laughs> okay, I can go back to zero. Now let me go to the track on that, that's hard pan to the left. Do the same thing. I'm going to go, this time I'm going to go seven milliseconds. You hear that? Go back to zero. Let's go three mil. Back to zero again. Fascinating. You'll find that if you, um, let me kill those for a sec. You'll find that if you, um, uh, if you start to go any further than seven milliseconds, that the effect is lost. Uh, again, I'm not an expert when it comes to this stuff, so I can't tell you the science exactly as to why that is, but it's certainly something that you might consider looking up on online and, uh, and, and seeing what's going on there. So it's a wonderful, wonderful little trick that you can use to give that psychoacoustic impression of, of directionality without actually using the pan knob. And you'll find as you start using this technique that it actually works... Um, it works better than panning in a lot of situations because you have this really finite control when you start to mess around with the, the, the delay times of that one side. You have a really finite control as to exactly and precisely where you place that track in the mix. Um, it's really, really neat. And you'll find, too, that the, the stereo image tends to hold up better as you, um, like as you shift your, 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 your head from side to side between the sweet spot, like between the two speakers uh, in your studio. <clears throat> you'll notice that the, the position, the placement of that sound source, when you use this sort of variation on the Haas effect, um, it doesn't it doesn't blur or or smear like it uh, it can tend to when you use um, a panner because a traditional panner, what's actually happening is when you pan when you grab the pan knob on your control surface or or, or click on it in your DAW, what you're actually doing is when you when you crank it to the right, what you're actually doing is is turning the left channel down in volume and turning the right channel up in volume volume so it's it's um it the the sense of of directionality is achieved by by volume by gain and and that's kind of an artificial way of doing things that's not how your mind in 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 the natural world actually determines where a sound is coming from it doesn't determine it by how loud the sound is in the left ear versus the right ear it determines i shouldn't say that absolutely because that's got something to do with it but but more so it det it's determining the directionality by the distance or the difference rather in 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 time between when the sound hits the left ear as opposed to the right ear so that's what's actually occurring in physics and so it stands to reason that um that it's it's going to be a more natural and more convincing effect when you treat it that way in your mixes so let's just have a listen to that one more time before i wrap this uh this portion of the show up uh let me bring those tracks back in Again, this is just one track that I just duplicated. Uh, in Cubase, you can just right-click on a track and say duplicate, and I'm sure you can do the same thing in every other DAW. Um, and then again, I panned, one, I panned each track, one hard left and one hard right, and so they, they cancel each other out and you still hear the sound in mono. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna take the left, the left track, I'm gonna add, seven mil of delay boom there it is i love that <laughs> go back to zero beautiful now i mentioned that you start to stretch past seven mil and it starts to uh to change things a bit let me try 10 and you'll see what i mean doesn't sound too bad actually 
Let's go a little further. Let's go 15. Interesting. Back to zero. Let's go to the other side. I'm going to go to the other track and I'm going to go 20 and see what that does. See, when I start to get up into those higher numbers, it makes the track sound wider, but it doesn't make it doesn't pinpoint the directionality. Have a listen to that. It's it starts to sound more stereo, but it still sounds balanced. Go back to zero. There's that straight mono right down the dead center. And go back to twenty again. hear that, eh? It sounds wider, but it doesn't sound off to the left or off to the right as much as, let me go back to zero. Let me make that a five millisecond. That has a definite sense of directionality to it. Interesting. Back to zero, and there it is. So I wanted to share that with you guys because like I say, as an audio geek, I find that absolutely f uh, fascinating. And, and I'm always interested, as I'm sure, or at least I hope, you all are in, in learning interesting and uh, unique techniques that you can incorporate into your bag of tricks, as it were. And that one is uh, is something that I hope you guys will play around with. And if you come up with interesting uh, uses for it or, or, or whatnot, then drop me a line. Leave a comment under this post um, in the podcast uh, in the, uh, techmuse.ca. Uh, and again, I'm going to spell that for you. T-E-C-H-M-U-Z-E dot C-A. It's not tech news. It's tech muse. <laughs> um, and let me know what you think about that. I thought it was great. And, uh, and I hope you do, too. And we're going to move along from here.